Medical emergencies in dental clinics. Why we need to know about that? Well, the two some studies to tell that in each year you might find 0.7% emergency cases. And in another study, you might find one case in each three to four years. And when they mean the emergency, they mean the serious emergencies that leads to complication like death. So, better to be prepared in these kind of situations. Now, there is a suggestion how to be prepared for these situations. The first thing, you need to have an access to drugs and equipment in your dental clinic to help you to serve that patient. The another thing is, you need to have the medical history of that patient because it will lead you exactly to the diagnosis. And training and knowledge of that patient uh, of these emergencies could help you to serve and rescue the patient and know who to call exactly because between the countries it is different. There is a suggestion by the UK Resuscitation Council in 2006 about the equipments that you need to have in your dental clinic. The first equipment, exogen delivery system, which is quite important. It has a measurement to measure how much of liters you will give in each case and there is a different mask for each different type of patients, young, adults, and so on. Portable section, it's not an important, uh, big Im importance in our uh, dental clinic because we already have some sections to section anything inside the mouth to, to avoid the risk of aspiration of these instruments. Space device for inhalation, better to have it to deliver the inhaler medicine. Automatic external defibrillator, why to give a shock for those patients who have cardiac arrest. Blood glucose device, if you are suspecting the patient is hypoglycemic, better to use this to know how much is the glycemia. You need intramuscular injections equipment, and that's because it's very important as a dentist, because you, you might require to inject some medications because intravenous you are not trained enough to give it so intramuscular injections is better to have it what about the medication you need to have adrenaline and you can see adrenaline will be giving intramuscularly and the adrenaline it should be very concentrated like 1 to 1000 and there is a different dosages for adrenaline when do we use actually adrenaline we use it for anaphylactic attack because it again against the action of anaphylactic and I wanted to describe about intramuscular injection where you inject exactly they recommend either you will inject the lateral of the thigh of the patient because it is free from artery and free from nerves because now it is less you have less chance that you lacerate any one of them inside this area and you as a dentist you know your anatomy in the oral and you are confident about tongue and so on you know the tongue is muscularly uh, muscular tissue so you can inject in the tongue but better be careful to not inject any other areas uh, although intramuscular has its disadvantage but it is an excellent procedure for us for emergency cases Another medications, medication for hypoglycemia, you need oral glucose like 5 grams like juice, orange juice is enough to give for that patient, so be prepared for that. And we could give intramuscular glycogon 1 milligram. For dextrose, it is giving intravenous, but it's better to not have it, this one, better to be given by the hospital, where they are specialized on that. When you give it orally, you will give it when the patient is conscious. You give it intramuscularly when the patient is unconscious. Moving on to other drugs like beta-1 agonist. Now, uh, beta-1 agonist, for example, salbutamol inhalers for those patients who have asthma attack and they inhale it. And could you give them midazolam for those patients who have epilepsy? status epilepsy only and 
This midazolam is a muscle relaxant, so it reduces the muscles. The patient it helps the patient to breathe. There is glyceryl triterinate spray and aspirin. These are good for myocardial infraction. Moving to the medical history, the medical history will give you to the correct diagnosis. The patient collapsed and he has a diabetic. It is more common that could he could have a hypoglycemia. The patient is healthy individual and he faint. He collapsed uh, when he sees the injection. You will tell this patient is having simple faint and you know how to treat it. Previous myocardial infarction. Um, you could know that this patient could have another myocardial infarction. So medical history will give you the exact diagnosis. Now, when I want to speak about the disease, different medical emergencies now, but it's very important to differentiate between these terms in the list. There is something called faint, syncope, vasovagal attack, uh, collapse, and fit. What is the difference between them? Faint, syncope, and vasovagal attacks, they are actually the same meaning the same meaning and they don't have any difference between them cool and we will speak about that later after this slide what is it exactly collapse when we see when we say collapse it means it means a symptom and we don't know what is the diagnosis a uh, patient may collapse because of hypoglycemia patient may collapse because of syncope the patient could uh, collapse because of myocardial infraction, so it is a symptom. Fit is like epilepsy. Uh, one type of it is epilepsy, which is involuntary movement of the muscles. And fit could not be only by epilepsy; it could happen because of severe hypertension, uh, because the patient has brain injury, something like that. But it's not necessary to be epilepsy. Starting with the first emergency, and it's quite common, which is uh, the simple faint that I told you before. Now, what is the symptoms of these patients? The patient is a young individual, and and you introduce some LA. The patient collapse, and what do he has? An, you see weakness, tiredness. The patient is cold and have skin. The pulsation is slow at the beginning, but then it starts to be rapid, and. He, you will recognize it immediately and why it happens the patient is stressed he in the dental chair he is afraid from you normally it happens for those patients who are young or adults and they are medically fit children are less likely to have this kind of faint why because this they don't hide their fear and they try to scream and move their muscles so the circulation goes to your, their brain but for adults the circulation does not go to their brain now how you prevent these kind of situation to happen is when you give an aid for these patients who are fearing have fears try to make them flat and inject them don't inject them while they are sitting because this is more chance because the blood is not going to the brain now how you treat this kind of uh, emergency uh, you are gonna to uh, rise the legs above the level of the head so the circulation goes to the head and aim in the next appointment to not have the same emergency moving on to anaphylaxis which is type 1 of hypersensitivity Anaphylaxis could result because of medication like penicillin or latex or could be insect bites. Sometimes these kind of anaphylaxis could cause to cardiac arrest and the patient could die. And it's quite serious and it could develop within the first 5 minutes or it could be very late. The symptoms, what type of symptoms? It varies according to the uh, allergen but mostly you will see the patient is itching there is redness they could have injury edema wheezing um, difficulty in breathing tachycardia a lot of things you will see seeing reflexes and how you manage it you see this um, the suggestion that I told you about the inject about the equipments and one of these equipments is adrenaline it's quite effective for these emergency situations where you give it 
intramuscularly and in this situation it's better to call the emergency immediately and as told it can develop to cardiac arrest moving on to hypoglycemia patient could warn you that they have it um, normally those who have hypoglycemia will see them they are unconcentrated and they are aggressive they are sweating a uh, tremor something like that um, but be aware that those who have diabetes could develop myocardial infarction and so you should know the exact symptoms that they have myocardial infarction has its basic symptoms and hypoglycemia has basic symptoms I already have spoken about the management and the equipment you will give if the patient is conscious you will give oral gel cause if the patient is unconscious you will give glycogon intramuscularly and if the patient becomes unconsciousness uh, unconscious better to go to call the emergencies and if he develops cardiac arrest of course you are gonna to do the basic life support CBR and so on fits like as I told you like epilepsy epilepsy has a different types one of them is tonic clonic seizures which is the, the commonest one and normally it happens during the childhood and continue and they could have some signs which is we uh, got aura signs they feel that the epilepsy will come today uh, that is coming um, it could be initiated by different uh, reasons in your dental clinic it could be initiated by stress you could give for example extraction they could have fits that time uh, these attacks normally you don't do um, much on tonic clonic seizures you you will wait the patient until he becomes conscious you will stop the treatment of course after the patient until the patient comes conscious you you you, you try to calm the patient to to try to tell him the nicest words that it's okay it's going on try to breathe from your nose and so on they are involuntary they have involuntary movement but they can hear you and they normally bite on their tongue but be aware that nothing inside their mouth that they could swallow it or something um, the risk in fits that they could develop status epileptis and it could not have in your dental clinic it can have it in anywhere inside in their house and status epileptis is after the fits they could develop it uh, if the fits stays more than three minutes or five minutes then this is an emergency thing and you need to take an action call the emergency and you need to start giving midazolam midazolam is giving intramuscularly why you give it it is a muscle relaxant and and that helps the patient to breathe because status epileptis will prevent uh, breathing from his nose and to the oxygen goes to the brain so better to do that state midazolam and that will help it and you try to administer oxygen or something to that patient anything until the emergency comes and takes an action chest pain and uh, if they don't have any history of trauma chest pain is have a different type of diagnosis it could be stable angina myocardial inf uh, in, in, in myocardial infraction and stable angina pulmonary embolism uh, mostly it's myocardial infraction that we are feeling about now um, actually angina comes in different stages there is stable angina when the patient is not having any exercise when he is having exercises he have this pain there is unstable angina when he does exercises he have pain and uh, uh, when he doesn't do any exercises and uh, even if he's in rest he will have pain and there is myocardial infraction which is quite serious the patient could die in that time and that's indicate a complete blockage of the coronal artery and he could develop cardiac arrest so better to treat what is the symptoms they have central pain in their chest pain could radiate to their jaw and to the neck and to the left arm and these are the basic the classic symptoms of the myocardial action so better to treat immediately what you are gonna to do if the patient conscious start to give aspirin 3 milligram which comes there's a chewable aspirin they could chew it you give it interlingually or a spray or something these aspirins anti-platelets anti action 
it makes the blood more to flow easily and it's fast in action and you start to give oxygen call emergency immediately if the patient develops cardiac arrest you start the cbr immediately moving to asthma asthma could be mild or severe for mild you will tell the patient to to serve himself by using the inhaler and, and treat himself and you will observe the patient for 45 minutes no treatment should be indicated for severe cardiac arrest you will see then you will do the emergency action you will do CBR or something you will see the circulation the airways and so on and lastly the foreign body respiratory obstruction it could happen your clamps when you're doing they could aspirate them and swallowing them is better than aspirate them we know that now if there is a if there is mild obstruction the patient is coughing and you will encourage the patient to cough it and you don't take an action but if there is severe obstruction and the patient is in, how you know it the patient unable to cough that the patient is conscious according to scully they say five back slaps and abdominal thrust i don't recommend five back slaps i recommend abdominal thrust because the slaps would increase uh, the object to go more in so abdominal thrust is the better one where you try to push the patient from his abdomen to encourage him to get air. if uh, if the patient is unconsciousness unconscious then you will do the emergency action you go anywhere to to help in these kind of situations that's all about the medical emergencies i hope it is beneficial for you see you in other lectures